Here are some explanations of several possible tests that you may receive if you're a cardiac patient at a local hospital or clinic. Whether you're a cardiac patient or not, you're probably gonna be familiar with some of the basic tests that are already done, such as blood pressure, pulse ox, uh, EKG, and our modern fitness watches. I have a whole other video on all the medical devices that you can have at home for monitoring your heart health, but this video is focused on the ones that you would get in a hospital or clinic. Having been through all these tests before, some of them multiple times, it's all routine to me, but if you haven't had them, this should give you a good idea of the basics of what to expect in terms of not only what the test is gonna show the doctors, but also what you can expect as a patient based on my personal experiences. Now, I would love to have had a camera set up in the corner for each of these procedures, but that was not an option. So you'll have to bear with me in my verbal explanation and I'll find some pictures where I can to try to hopefully give you a little better image of what's going on. The first test is echocardiograms, or echo for short. And they're very similar to an ultrasound in that they use sound waves through a wand to gather images of the heart and its functions. It can not only take pictures of the heart itself, but captures blood flowing through the heart, including through the valves. This was the first of these tests that I experienced way back in junior high or so, when I was first diagnosed with a mitral valve prolapse, or heart murmur and the valve wasn't leaking that bad at the time, but they wanted to do a test to establish a baseline, capture that data in reference to watch it over time to see if it was degrading. This test was also used later in life when they used it to determine that my valve had degraded enough to where it was leaking problematically, and that helped them determine that I needed to have surgery. An echo can also tell us an ejection fraction percentage, or EF. An ejection fraction is the percentage of blood that gets pumped out of the heart with each beat. An ejection fraction of 50 to 70 is considered normal. You don't really wanna be above that, and you really don't wanna be below that, which is where I am right now. But this ejection fraction is a stat that they can use right now to determine how fast my heart is failing. It's a simple painless test, no drugs, no IVs. You just lay on your side, usually your left side, and they take the wand and they put the gel on it like an ultrasound, and they move it around to take the images. Super simple, takes probably about an hour. The next is a nuclear cardiac stress test, or stress test for short. And this is a test performed on a treadmill, and it measures cardiovascular function both at rest and under load, i.e. when you're running on the treadmill. The first of these that I had was many years ago after having pericarditis on a follow-up appointment. So they put me on just a treadmill. All I had for uh, equipment was EKG attached and I think oxygen levels. The last one that I had was right before the most recent open heart surgery. And it was a critical part of diagnosis because I had shortness of breath that was very noticeable and problematic, but the echo couldn't determine any problems because it only was looking at me at rest. So getting on the treadmill and doing this stress test was critical because that showed that under load, there was a problem and that's what helped us find the stenosis in the heart valve. On that occasion, in addition to the treadmill, the other equipment was a mask hooked up to an apparatus that helped measure lung function in addition for a better cardiovascular complete picture. The worst part of this test is having to run on a treadmill, which I absolutely detest. But beyond that, it's not that bad. And actually this case, it was critical to helping me find the issue. So if you're having shortness of breath while you're working out and the echo isn't showing it, you might talk to your clinicians about a stress test to see what it looks like under load. The next test, Transesophageal echocardiography, or TEE for short, is similar to an echo in that it uses sound waves to capture images of the heart and its function. As we said earlier, an echo wand is applied to your torso on the outside. The difference for a TEE is that it's actually snaked down your throat so that it can get images closer to the heart and at different angles. 
Most of the echo views that I've seen show kind of like cross sections of the heart, like you would see, you know, looking from the side or the front. With the TEE that I had last week, they were actually able to show a view head on of the problematic valve. For this test, you will probably receive an IV with sort of a twilight medication to kind of knock you out. The first time I had one of these, it did put me to sleep for the whole procedure. This time, I actually started coming half awake uh, towards the end of it, where I was sort of pseudo-conscious as they finished up the testing and imaging, and they were actually able to show me some images of that head-on view of the valve and where the leaks are occurring uh, during the end of the procedure. In addition to the IV, you'll also get to rinse with some horrible tasting lattacaine and gargle with it because they want to kind of numb the throat before they snake that camera down there. The other thing you'll get is just a, it's more of like a gel swig of something to kind of coat your throat uh, to make it a little easier as well. The sort of strange feeling part of it, I guess, is that they also have this kind of a mouthpiece that they put on that's strapped around like in Pulp Fiction, except instead of a red ball, it's got a hole in the front, and that hole is to guide the wand as they snake it down your throat while you're unconscious. CT scans are a very versatile test procedure that can be used for a lot of things. As far as a cardiac CT scan, that's basically just to get more images in a different way of your heart and its function. There's no sedatives, it's painless. They just put you on a table and slide you into this chamber. The only chemical thing I guess to be aware of is that they do inject a tracer into your veins through the IV. And that gives you this really weird feeling of being just warm everywhere throughout your body. It's a little bit strange. Other than that, they slide you into this. And this is not one of those big noisy MRI chambers that you you may have seen. This is just a CT scan, it's quiet, they slide you in. The only discomfort you might experience is if you're claustrophobic, yes, you're going into this chamber where you might feel a little bit closed in, but it's only a few minutes, you're in and out and done. Cardiac catheterization is the most invasive of the tests on this list. And we can just call it cath for short. This is a very versatile process that can be used not only for imaging, but also for simple procedures. I actually had catheter procedures done for both the PFO hole closure in my heart as well as a couple ablations. For any of the cath procedures I've had in the past, I've always been put to sleep for the procedure. The doctor last week, however, chooses not to knock you out during the procedure. Instead, he uses a local anesthetic in the groin which does have to be shaved first because they're going in there, but he uses a local anesthetic where he's gonna be inserting the tools into your arteries and or veins. You're gonna be placed on a table in the cath lab. It's gonna look a lot like an OR room. You're gonna see a bunch of screens on one side and a control booth somewhere around and a team of clinicians all around you. Once they either knock you out or they apply the local anesthetic to the groin, then they're going to start inserting tools into your femoral artery, which is a direct path and lets them get right inside the heart to get some really good images. In my case last week, they also inserted a tool into the vein right there because that again gave them sort of a different angle to come in to get some different diagnostics. If you happen to be awake during your procedure like I was last week, you'll hear a lot of banging and it didn't make sense, so I asked the doctor afterwards, I said, can I ask what you were banging on down at the end of the table? And he explained that the tool can potentially get air in it, and you definitely don't want air bubbles in your heart. So what they're doing when they tap it on the end of the table is they're knocking the air bubbles out, just like you'd you know, plink a, a syringe or anything else, you wanna get the, all the air bubbles out, that's what they're actually doing. Bubbles in your Coke, good. Bubbles in your heart, bad. Once the procedure is over, now you have this obvious leak in your blood flow system. So, there's a couple different ways that they can plug it. One is to just apply pressure to the groin until the bleeding stops. And then they'll want you to stay at that hospital for a while. In fact, my procedure ended around uh, seven o'clock the other day and they wanted to keep me overnight at that point. So what I asked for is the same thing that I've received at every other cath procedure so far, 
is an angio seal. And that's a little bit different. Instead of just pressure and letting the body plug itself, the angio seal is inserted into the leak hole and you only have to stay for a couple more hours, have bed rest, lay still, flat on your back, don't bend your leg, don't lift your head up, and then you can go home. Any procedure where you have some kind of anesthetic or twilight or whatever, they're not gonna let you drive home, so you'll have to have an Uber or somebody drop you off, pick you up, whatever. The only one of all these in the list that you have any kind of care afterwards, I guess, would be if you have an angio seal, you're gonna get information from the hospital on how to take care of it. Mine was don't drive for three days, uh, don't go to the gym for a week, and don't submerge it for a week because they don't want that plug to dissolve and bleed out. But within a week, you're back to normal and on with your life. If you haven't done so, please click the link below to subscribe to the channel, click the little bell for notifications, check out the YCC merch store, see if there's anything you like, and live for today.